It has been a little while, and for that reason, I'm very happy to welcome back to the show, a friend of the show, Nomi Kantz. Nomi, welcome back to the Damage Report. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Whoa, you're coming with a lot of energy there. Oh. Yeah, I've been living off of coffee and adrenaline for the last yeah. uh, four months. I've got some of that too. There's something weird about the image though. I don't see one Nomi, I see many Nomi. Oh my God, I know it's painful. <laughs> uh, so you are running as a candidate for a New York City public advocate. That race is now just a, a few weeks from closing. It's, it, it ends on the, the 26th, correct? Yes, we are. The election's on February 26th. I'm gonna say that 9,000 times mm -hmm. <laughs> to our viewers in New York. February 26th, same polling place. Because it's a very um, unusual election, it's a special election in the middle of winter, although it doesn't feel like winter. Uh, and yeah, it's, we're expecting incredibly low turnout, which is which is great for us because our base is mobilized and energized and educated, and and uh, it could really come down to you know a few friends here and there, and maybe like a family. So I know that we've talked about this before, but just in case there are new viewers who aren't familiar with the position of public advocate, why is that a, a, an important role inside of New York? Yeah, so the public advocate is the second most powerful uh, office in the city. Although the budget isn't as large, uh, it is second in line to the mayor. It is the watchdog of the city. The office is there to make sure that New York City government, all its agencies, uh, the mayor, the city council are all doing their jobs and making sure that everybody in New York has a voice, not just the special interests, not just the real estate developers who have a very, very loud voice in the city. Uh, and of course, not the political institutions. So uh, there has been uh, some some media attention uh, put onto the race. And recently, the New York Post did a write up on the different candidates. There, there are many, I believe 17 at this point. Um, how would you rate the seriousness with which they took your candidacy <laughs> in that write up? Okay, so this is, this is hilarious because um, yes, there are 17 people on the ballot, but they're actually going to be, there were 10 people in the debate, which was two days ago. And 10 in the debate are, you know, for lack of better words, the front runners, those who've raised enough money to be viable, uh, those who've been able to get their message out and mobilize support. Some people have been able to do that that weren't on the stage. It's a little bit of a pay to play scheme. But um, the New York Post, just a couple of days before, wrote this piece like, these are the quirky candidates in the race. and. Frankly, I was lumped in with folks that, you know, are not on the debate stage. I am, was on the debate stage. I qualified. We've raised, you know, over $125,000 at this point. We have hundreds of supporters and volunteers. We submitted 10,000 signatures to get on the petition, uh, to get on the ballot. And they lumped us in with the quirky candidates. And they said that I was um, an actress in a low budget movie. Now, what they're referring to, which just shows the quality of reporting here on this hit piece, uh, they're referring to a campaign ad I did for a friend over 10 years ago, in which it was a mock ad of Republicans and it went viral. I literally appear in it for two seconds. It's called I'm Voting Republican. And it's like, I'm voting Republican because, you know, who wants uh, a clean environment? <laughs> uh, who believes in labor standards? It's, it's a parody. So that's what they, they just erased my entire history, my entire um, resume. And, and, you know, we proved them wrong because uh, we won the debate. We were able to, we got the most positive response from the debate. We had um, just as much airtime as the Speaker of the City Council, former Speaker, whose response online was negative. Uh, we got the most tweets by far, as opposed to anybody else. And uh, the New York Times barely mentioned us the next day. Uh, we had some of the most explosive moments. It's, it's very clear that the press is scared of having somebody take on uh, the economic model of the city, taking on the developers, taking on the politicians on stage who are really bought off by these folks. And it uh, doesn't mean that we're going to stop. We're just going to keep plugging away. And, and hitting matching funds is a big deal because when you hit matching funds in the city, you can now compete uh, with the people who are funded by the millionaires and billionaires with um, small dollar donations, which are multiplied uh, with, uh, with with by eight, basically. And it's amazing that New York actually has that system. It's the sort of thing that seems like it'd be good to see tested in uh, a lot more uh, different corners of uh, America. I, I do have a question about, so you have a debate with uh, 10 candidates on yeah. the, the stage. You have 17 potential candidates that people could be voting for. So when you have that many different people, uh, how does that shape your strategy? 
great question. Uh, you know, New York politics is tricky. You, to add to this, this is a very unusual campaign, possibly one of the weirdest elections in the history of the country. Um, even Dave Weigel from the Washington Post said that a couple of days ago. He said this is the weirdest election because on top of this all, it's a nonpartisan election. So. Republicans can vote in this election, independents can vote in this election. And I think that it really comes down to who can mobilize their base the best, who can excite people the most, who can get their message out and really activate folks. Um, some people in this race are competing for the same base. Um, they're competing for the same demographics, the same regions. Uh, what I'll say is I am the only millennial woman in this race. I am the only um, you know, in the top 10 candidates, I should say. I'm the only person who is not taking developer money. I'm the only person who doesn't take, you know, with that corporate money, uh, lobbyist money, charter school money. You know, we are a very small dollar driven campaign. And so distinguishing myself is actually a little bit easier than I'd say some of the other folks because, you know, they're all politicians. Uh, they're from similar neighborhoods, similar messages, similar, similar backgrounds. My background is I've actually been a watchdog. Mm -hmm. Literally nobody in this race has been a watchdog. Uh, in the actual charter of New York City, it says that this is the ombudsman position. That's a really wonky term, but I was an ombuds person on the DNC Unity Reform Commission. So of all the people running, uh, I'm the only one calling for, for the, the public advocate to be removed from the, the succession, succession to the mayor. I'm the only one who's taking on the developers and taxing them. Um, I am the only socialist in the race. So I think that we have a very clear path uh, because not only is this our, our base that, that really we're not competing with anybody else, but it's the base that got AOC elected. It's the base that took on all those IDC, um, the, the IDC members who are holding up our government. It's what got, you look at who's won in the last year in New York, who's beaten the establishment, they're millennial progressive women. And I'm the only one in this race. No, Miki, are you suggesting that the, hey, I know, maybe a surprise. Uh, <laughs> are you suggesting that the New York Post framing of you and the leaving out of your history with the DNC and your past electoral history might have to do with their right wing framing? Hmm. A little bit of the right wing framing. I also think that they're sexist too. I mean, there's, it's hard to know which, they're basically both. And it's not just New York Post, everybody's doing it. All the reporters uh, in the mainstream press are pretending we don't exist. They're pretending that we don't, we're not hit, hitting matching funds. They're pretending that we weren't on the debate stage. You gotta watch this debate because it's very hard to pretend that I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's watching this and they want to, if they wanna see that debate, if they wanna get involved in the last weeks of the election, um, what happens between now and the 26th? So from now until the 26th, uh, we have a big deadline on, on the 11th. It's the last deadline to hit matching funds. Uh, what that means is if you're a New York resident, your dollar gets matched by another $8. But we don't receive that money until we hit their threshold. Mm -hmm. And we are extremely close, just a couple thousand dollars away from hitting the threshold. And then once we hit that, uh, the city will give us all that money, and then we can mobilize folks, uh, hire organizers, uh, get you know, put out press, uh, possibly even buy an ad. In an election like this, that might make a difference. I don't want to say that, but you know, at least digitally we can buy ads. Uh, it's really old-fashioned, you know, door knocking that's going to get us elected. But it's going to really come down to are we able to blanket 8 million people across five boroughs. So that's the first uh, thing that's happening in the near future. Uh, we have another debate on February 20th. I believe that we'll have qualified for that at that point. So stay tuned on February 20th for that debate. And in the meantime, you know, we have an event, a big concert if you're in New York. We have a huge concert with Josh Fox and Ra Ra Riot on Sunday at the Chelsea Music Hall. You can go to our website, you can go to my my um, Instagram, Nomi Kikonst, and and you know, buy tickets there and, and meet me in person if you like. Uh, but we are gonna be, we're looking for volunteers, uh, we're gonna be mobilizing on the street. You know, DM me on Twitter, message me. I'm very involved in communicating with folks. Uh, you can also just go to our website and sign up to volunteer. But the elections on February 26th, it's really about getting the word out and telling your friends and family, if you live in New York, to chip in a few bucks. Uh, obviously, we'll accept money from anywhere, but it really is matched if you live in New York. Well, Nomi, obviously, good luck uh, in the election. We're gonna be watching, and thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. I miss you. Thank you. Miss you, too. Miss you. Bye. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. 
If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.